Chemical formulas. TIC 8.5D. Recognize that chemical formulas are used to identify substances and determine the number of atoms of each element in chemical formulas containing subscripts. When we are finished, you should be able to answer these uh, three essential questions. What are chemical formulas used for? What is the subscript determined in a chemical formula? And what does the coefficient determine in a chemical formula? First, let's talk about the periodic table. The periodic table contains elements. Elements are a substance that cannot be separated into a simpler substance by physical or chemical means. Example, we have lithium, whose chemical symbol is Li, oxygen or oxygen gas, O2. Two or more atoms joined together forms a molecule. Here are a few examples of molecules. Hydrogen gas, oxygen gas, nitrogen gas, chlorine, nitrogen oxide, water, nitrogen dioxide, and carbon dioxide. Molecules can be made up of the same type of atom, example O2, or it can be made up of two or more different types of atoms, which we can also call a compound. Example here, uh, the compound for water, H2O. Organic compounds, it's a compound that contains the elements carbon and elements such as hydrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, nitrogen, and sulfur. Examples, CO2, which is carbon dioxide, and C6, H12O6, which is glucose. Organic compounds must contain carbon. So what is a chemical formula? Chemical formulas are used to identify substances. They use element symbols and subscripts to show the number of atoms of each element. Example, the chemical formula for water is H2O. We have two atoms of hydrogen and one single atom of oxygen. Here are more examples of chemical formulas. Carbon dioxide, one carbon, two oxygens, Salt contains one sodium and one chlorine. Glucose has six carbons, 12 hydrogens, and six oxygens. So how did I determine this? This is called counting atoms. We're gonna go through the three rules of counting atoms for chemical formulas. The first rule, is the subscript rule. The subscript tells you the number of atoms you have for each element. Subscripts only refer to the atom that they are behind. For example, H2S. This two is behind hydrogen, so there's two hydrogen atoms. There isn't a number on sulfur. When there's not a number, the symbol itself represents one atom. The second rule, the coefficient rule. The coefficient tells you the number of molecules you have in a chemical reaction. Coefficients apply to the entire molecule. You multiply the coefficients and the subscripts. So now this formula H2S has a coefficient of two. So that tells me I have two molecules of this formula. Now to count the individual atoms, Multiply the coefficient by the subscript. So two times two, we have four hydrogens. Two times one, we have two sulfurs. The third rule is the parentheses rule. If elements or compounds are inside of parentheses, then the subscript behind the parentheses is applied to everything inside the parentheses. 
I know that's a lot to take in, so let's go through it quickly. This formula, BaOH2, the O, which is oxygen, and the H, which is hydrogen, are inside the parentheses. The Ba, or the barium, is not. So this subscript outside the parentheses does not pertain to barium. So barium is all by himself, so it's just one atom. Oxygen, on the other hand, will be one times two. We have two oxygens. Hydrogen will be one times two, and we have two hydrogens. So let's put all three rules together. So this example, we have three CaOH2, okay? So the first thing you do when counting atoms if you, is you list your elements. So we have calcium, oxygen, hydrogen, okay? There is a coefficient. Remember the coefficient rule states that this number gets multiplied by every element in this formula. And calcium is not inside the parentheses, so this two does not pertain to calcium. So calcium is simply one times three, and we get three atoms. Oxygen, on the other hand, is inside the parentheses, so it'd be three times one times two, and we get six oxygen atoms. Hydrogen, same thing, three times one times two, and we have six. If we add all of them up, the total atoms in this formula is 15. I hope this lesson was very helpful. Remember to send me any questions that you may have.